Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about problem solving. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, how should a junior developer try to solve a programming pl problem he is having difficulties solving? In other words, what would be some great general steps or things to keep in mind in order to solve problems? Thank you for your time and have a great, great weekend. Thank you. I will have a great weekend. So the, 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 the first thing I need to tell you here is that uh, I know, I, I, ho I hope that this is going to, f I hope that this is going to come out the right way, but in general terms, a lot of inexperienced developers, junior developers, they're looking for, for blueprints or magical Black, like my old martial, art te martial arts teacher used to joke and say that everybody who comes through his door wants to learn how to kill people with with the five finger death punch. Everybody's looking for some magical edge that they can use in order to just that will be this silver bullet type of thing that will always make the, everything work. And in I will just tell you that that's not the case. There is practically no such thing. So what I will tell you is that usually, at least in my experience, each developer has their own, like you have your own process for solving problems. Some things are very common that there are techniques that you use or general guidelines that a lot of people follow in order to solve problems. But your thought process, remember, your brain is completely unique. We don't have two versions of you, which means that you can get inspired by other people and this is one of the biggest lessons that I think that you could possibly learn as someone who is sort of inexperienced because it's a lesson that I learned the hard way which is that when someone tells you you should think this way or like five steps to nail every interview or w whatever like they're giving you absolute rules for something you have to remember that they are doing so one part because they want you to look at their video or buy their shit and one part because it's something that will grab your uh, your attention but it's really only focused on a, s a generalized person a person who doesn't exist it may not even be you who is that person so learning how to derive meaningful tips from something is a very good thing and that's what I'm going to try to give you now I'm going to give you my preferred tips for dealing with certain problems and you have to understand that if this does not make sense to you don't fucking do it this makes sense to me but if I give you these tips and you figure out that yeah actually you know what no Frederick is kind of like I don't really like this way that Frederick is using but actually there is this tiny thing that he was saying that actually that does make a little bit of sense I don't want to do it exactly like that but I can take some inspiration from that thing and that's the key thing I want you and not just for me I want you to do this for every single teacher you ever have some things will be so resonating with you that you go like this is obvious you have a hallelujah moment you realize that oh you've been thinking about the world wrong and in some cases they will give you a tip where if you just copy paste that tip it's actually not going to work out for you because your brain doesn't work that way or your system doesn't work that way but there were a few nuggets of information there which can inspire you to come up with the pro with a solution to the problem yourself that is more suited for you and then you're going to go on the tech talks and claim that this is the best way to do things and then i hope that you will say the same thing that i just said enough about that the first tip i would give you is around say dealing with bugs so my personal way of dealing with bugs is usually that you well of course you get a bug report or you have a log or something that says that something is wrong and the first thing that I try to do is to not look so much at the big picture unless I really know what's going on because I've had this issue a few times where I know exactly because there's a stack trace or something like oh this log message was was perfect it just describes exactly what went wrong but w let's assume that it is a bug that I don't know immediately what it is uh, the first thing I want to do is to uh, you say uh, well basically a binary search like that's what I do uh, a manual binary search 
where I just take an arbitrary point where I know that okay this is where the network request started and I have something unexpected something breaks along the line so what I want now is to know okay what went in this is why logging is so damn important it's super super important I need to know what came into the function and I will uh, I also need to know what came what came out of the function because if you know those two, the input and the output, then you have a boundary for where something can go wrong. If something that you expect came in and something that do you did not expect came out, that's a problem. But on the other hand, if both things are expected, but there's something going on in the middle, you still have the same, the same boundary. So then after that, I use either a debugger or something like that to try to pinpoint the, the smallest amount of code that I need to consider in order to figure out what's go going wrong. And that works very much like a binary search. Like you just pick an arbitrary middle point. Like okay, there I will say I will stop here and see, am I in a state that I expect to be in at this point in the execution? Yes or no. If I am in an expected point, then I know the problem is further down. All right, let's continue that process until I find a sweet spot of like a few lines where, between these two th these uh, lines of execution, something is not working. What is that? So now I have a narrow scope of where the problem might be. And now I look really thoroughly at that narrow scope and try to go, okay, if, not, if it's not obvious to me what's going wrong, at the very least I have narrowed down the problem to the minimum amount of code, which gives me very, a very easy time to express to other people. Like, let's say that I couldn't solve this problem. Maybe I have a coworker and I go, hey dude, you know, there is something wrong with this feature. Because if I go to him and I say, yeah, it's just, just breaks. That's not all that useful to him or to her. So I say, well, I've pinpointed that the issue is between these th these lines here. So it has something to do with this part of the feature. Could you have? Do you have any ideas? And then we uh, use our domain knowledge or we use our understanding of the system as a whole to figure out. Well, maybe there's another feature over here that caused this issue through an asynchronous thing, or like there can be many reasons as to why the thing broke. And by just narrowing it down to that minimum my, minimum thing, it becomes so much easier to figure to think about the large perspective again, because now you've narrowed down the possibilities to the bare minimum. So that is my biggest tip for you when it comes to bugs. For features, I like to say that you should work in an iterative fashion. Where I go, if I have a complicated feature that I'm not so sure about how I'm going to deal with it, the first thing I try to do is to just map out everything in steps. Where I try to say, all right. The basic version of this would need to look like this, and then okay, if I can get that working, then I can iterate again and say okay, the next because the total feature is more advanced than this, but then I can add another layer of complexity and try to fix that, and then the next thing. So it becomes a mini MVP type of thing. When you work at with backend logic, I think that TDD is like the best thing since sliced bread to deal with this. If you're dealing with a feature where you feel a little bit unsure about how that works or how you're going to do it, or if it's it might be a risky. Type type of thing always use test driven development guys I swear to you I love I, I whenever you see me do test driven development it's usually is either because the feature is very likely to go wrong or because I don't really know how I'm gonna solve this so you create a test for the basic version of your logic and so and that test to just check that they, you meet the basic requirements and then when you meet those requirements then you create another test that creates that checks that the more advanced parts of the feature, the more advanced requirements are actually working. And then you can iterate. And so you build up these tests from being very basic things to being more and more advanced. And as long as they're all passing, you know that, wow, your feature is now actually doing the whole thing. It becomes an MVP learning type of thing. Not at a feature level, but, but at a function level. And I love doing this. I, I that's the, the, This is one of my favorite times to do like pure die-hard test-driven development. It really helps my workflow. And for UI, I do a similar sort of thing where uh, usually I work in React these days. So what I usually will do is that I will just create a basic component that just kind of looks like the thing that I, uh, it doesn't even look like anything. It's like a H1 tag with foo in it. Just get that to the page and then look at the feature that you're supposed to build and just create the basic structure for the thing. Like build a basic version of it and do the same thing as with the test driven development type of thing. You don't necessarily have to write tests for this, you just work uh, in an iterative fashion, build the basic thing first and then add the next requirement and then the next requirement so that you don't have to think about the problem as this big big unit of everything. That usually helps me a lot. So what I want you to take away from this is that 
the way I usually solve problems is of course going to be fairly unique to me and I think that the same thing will be true for you so try to remember guys when you're getting tips on what tools to use or what mind tools to use or whatever you're supposed to be doing remember that just because something is perfect for somebody else it doesn't make it perfect for you it should try to learn that you don't follow rules like a salad or like a crazy religious person think about rules as good guidelines and try to derive things that will be useful to you from them and for me the rules of uh, working on a bug is try to use a binary search type of structure of working to figure out the minimum amount of code that is going wrong because that narrows the scope of the problem really really to the barest minimum which makes it very easy to think about what could be causing this issue when it comes to features work in an MVP fashion I really do suggest that you start breaking if you have a complicated feature with a lot of requirements or logic or something like that break it down to its base version first use test driven development to create a test to check the base case and then add on top until you actually iterate up until the big thing and the same thing goes for UI work. Create a base version first, get that working and then iterate until you have the whole thing. You can of course take a step back and just kind of consider and feel out where you're going to go with all of this. But just slicing things down into these smaller subtasks makes a world of difference. Have a great day.